If you don't get into anime before 30, but you still create manga, you're honestly torturing yourself. There's other things that you can do that make more money. If you want to be tortured, go work in tech. If you don't have good characters, your entire story's done. Hello and welcome back to the Mangaka Q&A podcast where I answer your questions about the manga and webtoon industries. If you don't know who I am, I'm Brandon Chen. I'm a professional in the manga, webtoon, novels, video game space, currently serializing six shonen series simultaneously, which is a lot of series. And this is what I do for a living, so let's get right into answering your questions. Do you think it's possible to make a living drawing manga independently? Yeah, I think you can 100% do that. I think it's a little bit hard depending on what country you're in. But ultimately, if you have a big social media following, which means that you can market your project to a lot of people, if you pump out manga and webtoon projects at a consistent pace, you can definitely do it. There's this guy, his name is Meriwether, and he's this combination of both independent and not independent because he works with large publishers like Neighbor Webtoon to do a lot of originals. But he also does a lot of independent projects, Goth Girl and The Job. I think is one series. He does like 20,000 series. A lot of them are short romance slice of life stuff. He's like the romance slice of life comedy version of me, right? He does a lot of this stuff independently and he makes a lot of money because he runs Patreon. He has merchandising. He's found a really good strategy for turning his studio and his independent works into a monetizable business. I think it's definitely possible. You just be really smart about it. And a lot of artists and a lot of creators are not willing to go through all that work of creating this business model, which is why they turn to a publisher that can take all that risk and all that hassle off their hands, right? But it is possible. Just a lot of work. How do you start a script? What influences the key events within the character's spheres? I don't know what the last part of that part means, but if I were you starting a script, you should like look at screenplays. Writing for screenplays is a good start. You want to take it a step further. So writing for screenplay, you typically don't detail the director and what the director is doing. However, for manga and webtoons, you are the director as the screenwriter, which means that you want to showcase exactly what's happening in the panel, i.e. like, hey, this is what view is happening. This is how far we are from the character. This is what What's happening to the characters, what they're saying, this is what they're feeling, this is what they're thinking. You want to explain everything so that when the artist sees it, they know exactly what to draw without even having to really think that much. I mean, they should be thinking, but if they're serializing, they're also grinding like really hard. And so you don't want them to have to spend too much time trying to figure out how to interpret your script. You want to give them exactly what your what your vision is, because if they, for example, miss your vision and you want them to go back and make changes, you don't want that. So I would say just be as specific as you can in your scripting phase. Social media advice for writers specifically post a lot, post every single day, be specific and post about your projects. That's what I'm doing right here. Posting social media content straight to you guys and advertising. Go read my manga and webtoons. Check it out. All links in my bio. Most important step on making a novel or manga. Most important step for making manga is not actually related to writing. It's actually the storyboard. The storyboard is what takes the script and defines what the whole thing is going to look like. The storyboard is the most important part of any manga or webtoon or any visual project. The most important step for making a novel is probably your plan. When you're writing a novel, you probably don't want to wing the whole thing because it's really hard to go back and change something that's a really big plot point. So for example, if you wrote 300 pages, I've done this by the way, if you write a 300 page book and you decide, hey, I actually want the main character to be a girl. Okay, well in that scenario, I'm probably going to have to go back and change a lot of different factors because being a woman is very different from being a man. That decision will then cause ripple effects throughout my entire novel, which are so hard to pinpoint and find. Might as well rewrite the whole thing. So you want to get like specific massive plot points down and nailed down as a novelist before you even dive into the deep end of, of writing the whole novel. Can you give any advice on how a writer should find a manga or webtoon artist to collab with? One, if you have no portfolio, be willing to spend money because no artist is going to put their faith in you if you don't have a track record of proven success. I would also say just look on social media and ask around. If you have money to spend, you want to hire artists that you think are talented and so you can usually find them on social media. I have no idea where else you would find one. So I think social media is the best way to find people because they're posting their portfolios online for you to check out. What genre have you wanted to explore making but haven't yet? Romance, 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 romance. I'm a big romantic. I actually wanted to do a romance novel for a really long time. It's not necessarily like so hardcore romance. It's more like closer to Spirited Away where there's underlying tones of romance, but you don't actually showcase anything like kissing or any holding hands or anything like that. It's like underlying tones of romance, but the plot is still something that's mostly focused on drama. So that's something that I really want to do, which is more Studio Ghibli-esque stuff. Obviously everyone 
don't want shonen action from me, which is why I'm leaning into the shonen action space, but I have a lot of concepts that are very Studio Ghibli romance-esque that I want to do. I will say that I am working with Angry Comics on a romance series though, which would be exciting. And that's like a romance romance series. That's not like a Studio Ghibli. It's like romance romance, which is pretty exciting and also a little daunting for me, but Ingrid is an expert in romance, which is why I think I'm going to be learning a lot from her. What are the fundamental elements to start to build the story? What matters the most is your characters. The characters that are the key point of your entire series that are going to drive forward your plot. They're going to drive forward your interactions with others. If you don't have good characters, your entire story is done. In manga and webtoons, characters are king. I always say this, you want to put the most time into focusing on your characters, your, their motivations, why they're doing what they're doing, because they're going to be the ones that drive forward the story, not the story itself. You don't want to create the story and then have the characters like molded to fit the story. You create the characters, you create a concept, and the characters drive the concept. If you don't get an anime before 30, will you still create manga? Yeah, I'm trying to get an anime adaptation before I turn 30 years old. I am currently 26 years old. There's turned 26 two months ago. Uh, will I still create manga if I don't get my adaptation? Of course. Of course. Of course I won't quit. I will want to quit, but I won't. I do hope that I get my anime before I turn 30 though. I think I have a lot of projects that by the time I'm 30, we'll have a lot of episodes, a lot of content for creators and stuff to check out. So hopefully one of these days, a, a producer or someone that's big in animation sees my videos or sees a piece of my content and decides to reach out. I would love for that to happen. Or if you guys know anyone, reach out and show them my stuff. Tips for writing manipulative characters. Smart characters if you're not smart. That's a great question. If you want to write mystery, you probably have to know the end game before you write the entire mystery. So what you end up doing is if it's a manipulative character, you know what they're going to do to the other person before you actually write the whole scene out. So for example, Light Yagami in Death Note manipulates this woman who is about to discover who he is. I think he like finds out her name and like kills her because he's like pretending to be someone else. So how does he manipulate her? Light is going to find out this girl's name and he's going to kill her. So the writer has to know that that is the end game. All the points that lead up to that moment, you have to kind of weave it together you have to create like plot points that slowly progress to that but the character that is like the target will never know what's going on so you have to look at things from their pov if i were the target and the main character that's manipulating me is doing this manipulative action does that would that reveal themselves to me right and if it doesn't and you might want to ask another person's opinion on this and if it doesn't then you're manipulating them correctly right and there's obviously different better ways to mani manipulate people and that might make us all psychotic as writers to decide what is the best way to manipulate someone in fiction but start off by knowing what the end game is what the manipulative character is going to complete and then build in the steps in between from there favorite side character trope i love characters like gojo satoru who are super overpowered and super arrogant i would say so eskinor for seven deadly sins gojo from jujutsu kaisen characters that are super overpowered and arrogant but are properly so because they're so overpowered are so fun and so cool to me however they always get killed off or wrecked because because there's no way that they can be like a stable part of the series being so overpowered and far better than the main character, right? So they usually have a tragic downfall. Not going to spoil Jujutsu Kaisen, but uh, I'm pretty sure Gojo is going to get killed. So he hasn't been yet, but I'm pretty sure he will be. Would you do a review show for other indie mangakas? I think that would be fun. If you guys have any review manga or manga or webtoons that you think I should review, I would love to do like a thing where I just review review stuff. I'm honestly thinking about doing like Twitch streams again, where I just review review on gun webtoon projects. I think that would be super fun. How do you fight creative burnout? I just do things that are different that are still fuel me. When you burn out, that means you're tired. So there's other things that you can do that give you energy. So example, working out, eating food, sleeping. Those are a few things, but also making videos recharges me. I get tired in a different way if I'm making too many videos, like my voice right now, I'm losing it. There's a different kind of creative aspect of myself that I'm tapping into when I'm creating videos versus writing manga or creating webtoons. Usually what I do is I'll write write a script, I'll create a video, and then I'll go back and write another script. And so I'm constantly creating this loop where I'm always doing something that's pertaining to my career, but it gives me energy. So I, you know, when I get back to the script, I'm not, you know, exhausted. And obviously I focus on my health, going to the gym and all that stuff, because that's super important. I think taking care of yourself is really important, but also finding things that give you energy back instead of take energy from you. For example, drinking and going out a lot used to take energy away from me, which is why I quit drinking and going out a lot, because it would prevent me from doing the things that I wanted to do. 
do what gives you energy. And that's a thing that I discovered from Mr. Beast, actually, who's a very popular YouTuber. If you're making a manga, but you don't like it, there will be someone who will say that they will like it. Sure, maybe someone will like the manga that you make, but here's the thing. If you make a manga and make a webtoon or make a series and you don't like it, what's the point? Why would you make something you don't like? If you don't like it, then you're honestly torturing yourself. There's other things that you can do that make more money. If you want to be tortured, go work in tech, you know, go work in finance. You can go make some money there. We get into this field of creating things because we want to make what we would watch. So I would say don't ever make a project that you yourself would not be a fan of. That is the biggest, worst thing ever. And it's funny because I think some people, some creators start off liking a project and then they end up hating it, which I find interesting. And then you can obviously tell when they start to dislike the project because the creativity falls off, the vibe falls off. You can tell from a reader's perspective if a creator doesn't like what they're doing. Always make what you want to make. Don't make something just because you feel like you're obligated to make it. If I want to make a webtoon, do I make a canvas first or can I make an original webtoon directly? I personally never made a canvas series myself. I'm going to be launching a few because I would like to own the intellectual property entirely. Before I, I went straight to original, I already had a few series that were already launched on different platforms, which is why they gave me the chance to do an original. So I would say you need to build your portfolio up and your trust up before the editors at webtoon or another publisher will give you a chance to go straight to original. Canvas is obviously the easiest way to get an original because if you don't have a portfolio yet, it's really easy for you to start off by posting to, to Canvas, proving yourself to the editors, and then eventually they'll reach out to you. If I were you and you haven't done anything yet, there's probably no way you're going to original without having done anything yet. You want to create something on Canvas first or create something somewhere else, then the editors will find interest in you if you've done something that is worth talking about. All right, guys, I'm losing my voice, so that's going to be all for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please check out the manga and webtoon series that I have. All the links are in my websites, Ren and Chen, the card. I'm going to put it on the screen here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a subscribe, drop a like, tell your friends and leave comments for questions that you would like for me to check out on the next video. So again, thank you guys so much for watching and peace.